Well, during the Houston floods, we saw dramatic rescue images of people, but then pet rescue images began to surface. Some of these pets were separated from their owners. And tonight, Colorado is stepping in. A local shelter just got back from Houston, loading up eight four-legged survivors. Our Denver 7 Sally Mamdu was there when they arrived, and she joins us live with more. And Molly, we're in Lone Tree right now, where just about an hour ago, 22 dogs just arrived from Texas. These cuties are right behind me over there. There's some of them. The rest have already been taken by rescues. Now, these dogs were initially also in rescues in Houston, and I'm, I've been told by some of the people here that some of them had to swim their way out uh, to actually with, their, with the people that were taking care of them, with the foster homes that they were in. So, uh, But they're here, and guess what? These dogs here don't have to be adopted necessarily. They will pretty much be adopted as quickly as possible based off one of the people I just talked to. However, though, earlier today, we had another arrival uh, in Denver this time. Now, these these dogs were actually rescued from homes and they also have some amazing survival stories and these dogs still are looking for a home. For Pippa and the seven dogs inside this white van, Colorado is a place for new beginnings. Um, new names, new life. Yeah, whole new start. They're survivors of Hurricane Harvey. Pippa's owner had no choice but to leave her behind. They found her in a crate on a dining room table in an empty house. Pippa's owner notified authorities she was rescued and brought to a dry parking lot in Houston along with hundreds of pets. There are different um, basically tent cities out in parking lots. Filled with animals looking for a new home. Bethany Ferguson with Max Fun Dog Adoption Center here in Denver drove 15 hours to make it happen. Every 15 minutes there's 10 or so more dogs that are being relinquished, it's nonstop. It goes from dawn up until about one or two in the morning. She was able to bring back eight dogs. So they're Coloradans now. Oh yeah, they're gonna go get their first Colorado bath, probably the first bath ever for most of them. A new chapter of hope for dogs who lost more than just a home in Texas. And they're probably wondering when can you take one of these uh, cute dogs home? Well, it's going to be a little while because they first have to be medically evaluated and that could take up to two weeks. We are live in Lone Tree, Sally Memdu, Denver 7. That was my question. Thanks so much, Sally. And if you are interested in donating supplies or money to the relief effort, you can find a list of charities right now on the DenverChannel.com. Right now, a statewide manhunt is underway for a convicted felon. Mauricio Venzer Gonzalez is wanted in connection with Thursday's Amber Alert. He's accused of taking a mom and her toddler to Pueblo. Good thing they are safe tonight. Gonzalez was last seen at an RTD light rail station off Evans. If you see him, call police right away. A man in Aurora is literally sick of his apartment, and tonight he's waiting for an answer from the complex that he says won't fix his problem. David Wilson called Denver 7 about the sewer gas coming from his bathroom. He says management at the Park Place apartments is not fixing it. Now he feels trapped because he cannot afford to break his lease. Rotten eggs, bro. This is what's been causing me to be sick. And uh, the property manager don't want to do anything about it. The city of Aurora did issue a violation to the apartment complex, but the complex still hasn't done anything about the issue for days. That is after our original story aired. We will continue to press for more answers once the holiday weekend is over. Just ahead of 10, a discovery 66 million years old and was found right here in the Denver suburbs. And we're inspiring you on this Sunday. We're going to introduce you to a local woman serving those with disabilities using horses. I do it, number one, because I see the healing power of the horses here. We'll introduce you to this week's seven everyday hero next. Plus, get your dental work done for free, where a local dentist, dentist is offering free care on Labor Day. We're keeping track of the Triceratops discovery in Thornton. This is really cool. Teams have been working all weekend. Let's take you to the lab at the Museum of Nature and Science in Denver. It is not a full skeleton yet, only about 20 to 25 bones, including a rib and some vertebrae. Volunteers, though, they are working to clean up the finds, about 66 million years old, and the Triceratops excitement is still very strong. It's not every day that you truly find a fossil in your backyard, uh, so that's exciting. And also, you know, finding a triceratops along the front range is pretty, pretty exciting too. 
As I was telling you, my mom does this kind of That's work. That's so cool. It is cool. And this was found during the construction of a new public safety building in Thornton. And the goal is to put the bones together, put them on display at the museum. I asked him what you had to do to be able to do that. He said you have to be smart. So, yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> Winston Churchill once said, there's something about the outside of a horse that's good for the inside of a man. Horse therapy has proven to work wonders for people facing challenges. And as Mitch Jelnicker reports, this week's 7 Everyday Hero uses horses to help heal humans. Horses hear humans without a word being spoken. A horse knows if you have some anxiety issues. A horse knows if there's something, um, you have some balance issues. A horse knows there are, if you're sad, if you're happy. At the right step, they've harnessed the healing power of horses to help people. We provide He's looking. <laughs> lessons um, on basic horsemanship and riding skills for people with disabilities of all ages. The therapeutic horseback riding program at Littleton's Coventry Farms relies on more than 200 volunteers like Margarita Gutierrez. I do a variety of things. I come and feed the horses breakfast, lunch, or dinner. I also help with the lessons as a horse leader or a side walker. Good boy. Margarita helps the right step change lives of more than 100 people a year. People like Lizzie Mitchell, who comes here every week to ride Eli. Oh, he is the best. I swear, he loves to cuddle. Lizzie has learned a lot from Eli. He's always so gentle with his riders. He knows when to push you and when to pull back. He's helped me with my depression, anxiety, and he's helped me develop a backbone. Controlling a horse properly can be an empowering experience. You're in control of a thousand pound animal once you're up there, so I'm pretty sure, if anything, that's a major confidence booster. You may not have a lot of power in other areas of your life, but here, you're in charge and, and you're doing something real. None of this could happen, of course, without volunteers like Margarita. Any time that we say we have a need, Margarita bends over backwards to be there. It's an opportunity to give back, and more importantly, you're giving back, but you see the power in what's being done here. We have a surprise for Margarita today. Denver 7 oh my gosh. and Papa Murphy's are here to honor you as a 7 Everyday Hero for all your volunteering, all your help Thank you. with the right step. So congratulations. It. Nice Thank work. You. Very nice Thanks. work. Such a great story there. And to learn more about the right step, go to thedenverchannel.com and click on our community section and then 7 Everyday Heroes. All right, if you have been putting off the dentist, now here's your chance. All five Reese's Dental locations in Metro Denver are offering free dental services tomorrow from 8 a.m. until noon. As long as you are in line by 8 o'clock, you are guaranteed to be seen, and it will not cost you a dime. It's a way for us to just give back to the community. It's a day when we don't have to worry about any of the money, and it's just purely about giving a gift to people that we know they need. The infections in your mouth make any infection or condition in your body worse. So they're so appreciative. It's one of those few times that I think both the dentist and the patient are just as happy to see each other. For a list of locations, just go to the Denver 7 mobile app and click on the story. All right, Stacey Donaldson, it was epic hot today. It was a scorcher. Yeah. yeah uh, my dog even early this morning took her on a walk and she was already wilting halfway down the block. So I knew it was going to be a hot day. 97 degrees are high this afternoon, which was a record breaker. As you see, it's nice and quiet here across the Denver area this evening. Today we got up to 97 here at DIA. 100 for Sterling, 99 for Greeley and Akron and Fort Collins, 95 for Colorado Springs and upper 90s for the Western Slope as well. Even 93 for Craig. Now haze and smoke has been in in the atmosphere for us for the last couple of days from the fires that are off to our west and to our north. Now our winds are going to change a little bit more in through tonight and tomorrow as cooler air moves our way so more smoke will move in. I really think you'll notice lower visibilities as it makes its way through the state. It'll be warm again tomorrow but highs right around 90 degrees instead of closer to 100 like we had today and then 60s and 70s will be moving in for highs as we go into Tuesday. So be prepared for a cold front. It's going to dramatically change things for us. 73 right now in Aurora, 68 for Highlands Ranch, still 78 in Boulder right now, and 70 for Arvada. As for rain, 
it's been very quiet across the state. Here in Denver, we didn't see any showers today. It was dry. It was very hot. Down to our southwest, though, toward uh, Salida in toward Pagosa Springs, we had a few scattered showers this afternoon. Those have dried up. But I wanted to give you a peek at what's going on with Irma. We really need to, and especially if you have travel plans toward Puerto Rico, um, into the southeastern part of the U.S. by next weekend, keep an eye on Irma. This storm is still well off to the east of the east coast of the United States, but it is headed in this direction and it is expected to strengthen to a category four storm. So it's going to be very powerful. It's headed in the direction of the United States, but it still could veer a different direction than coming straight on toward the U.S. So it's still a while away, but keep an eye on it if you do have interest in those areas. As for our lows tonight here, we have 50s and 60s expected around the Denver area, 58 for Fort Collins, 57 for Byers, and 57 for Castle Rock. Our forecast tonight, 60 degrees here in Denver with partly cloudy skies. And our hour by hour forecast drops us into the 60s once we get to the early morning hours. So as you head out the door tomorrow morning, if you're not sleeping in for the holiday, 65 degrees at 7 a.m. And then we'll be back up in the upper 80s and low 90s tomorrow afternoon with partly cloudy skies. Our emoji forecast, 74 by 9 a.m., 86 by noon, and we'll have 90 by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So it'll be a warm one for us. But as you see here on our highs tomorrow, we'll have highs right around 90 degrees from Greeley to Boulder to Fort Collins with a slight chance for scattered afternoon thunderstorms. I don't think we'll see many of them. I think most of them will be up in the mountains, but across the plains, temperatures in the 80s and 90s. Now the chance for storms comes because of a cold front and that'll be passing through tomorrow evening. But right around barbecue time for dinner, 86 degrees with partly cloudy skies are expected temperature. But you see how this cold front affects us. We go from 90 on Monday to 70 on Tuesday to 80 on Wednesday with sunny skies. And we'll have mid 80s by Thursday, kind of our transition day to get back up to around 90 once again by the time we get to Friday afternoon, guys. All right, thank you so much, Stace. Yeah, the heat is on. <laughs> Marvel's Inhumans premieres on Denver 7 in just a couple of weeks. And one of the stars is from right here in Colorado. We sit down one-on-one -on -one with him, coming up next. All right, check out this guy. He looks pretty tough, right? Well, this is Gorgon the Guardian from the new ABC series Marvel's Inhumans, which is actually premiering this weekend on IMAX screens here in the metro area. But more importantly, the actor who plays him was born and raised right here in the metro area, even went to see you. Teresa Marchetta caught up with him when he came to town this week. How does it feel to come home? Sooner or later, the humans are going to find us up here. For this and, and, and doing this, I'm, it's kind of a dream come true, like honestly, you know. I'm actually, that's why I'm here, is I'm actually watching it at the movie theater that I used to I'm like watching movies at. No way. Yeah, so, Where's so, that? Uh, the Westminster Promenade. When you were sitting in that theater, as a kid, were you ever dreaming you'd be the guy on the screen? No, because I didn't, when I was watching as a kid, I didn't want to be an actor. I was like, had a whole line, like, I wanted to go into sports and everything. So. You went to see you and you did track. I did track, like I went with, uh, I'm a triplet and I went with my brother and sister. Awesome. And then uh, the first year it didn't work out. Uh, so I stopped doing it and I was looking at going into sports marketing. And then I saw my uh, advisor, now, this is like the only time ever met her, first time. And as I'm uh, talking to her, I'm like, I want to go into sports marketing, blah, 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 blah. And uh, she's like, in the middle, she's like, cuts me off. She's like, you should do acting. And I'm like, uh, no, but thank you. Thank you for that. The advisor said, hey, you could do a minor in acting. And I was like, so I went there, I was like, and they said, you can't do a minor, you have to do a major. And I'm like, oh. So then that night, I went to a party, not going to lie, and I saw this girl there. <laughs> and I was like, and I thought she was really cute. And she said, I was like, so what's your major? And she's like, a theater major. And I'm like, oh, yeah. That's the other deal. I'm that like, I'm a theater major as well. <laughs> With the show, they, you know, trying to do and wanting to do something different in a way that we see television. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, you know, it was kind of the best of both worlds, you know, almost having something shot in IMAX in the scope that it is. I'm checking you out behind me thinking, you're going to be doing some pretty cool stuff, I'm guessing. I, I feel I are got you pretty, to do... Are you kind of a stud in this? Let's be honest, are you? I'm not going to say I'm a stud in anything. I will let Come people on. say if I'm a stud All right, Okay, not. all right, but, but, but the character. Okay, we'll say the character. Okay, okay. The character, Gorgon. Yes. Gorgon. Gorgon. The Guardian. G Gorgon better be bad. You know what I mean? Like he's he's uh, he's a, he's a head of the Adelan military, um, and uh, through the process of Terra Genesis, uh, he created these I guess these goat-like hooves. And 
So when he stomps down, he creates this like seismic earthquake of destruction. So I mean, come on, yeah, yeah, you kind of are. Yeah. Let's be honest. <laughs> I mean, get, stand up for a second. You got to see how tall he is. Am I gonna like stay and I'm gonna just like okay. my hand is gonna get out? Of I, know, I think that's I what know, happens. Like, I know. yeah. <laughs> come on. I mean, you, you fit the part. Yeah, I'm like, you I'm fit like, the part. Like, what am I? I'm like yes. six. I'm like six three, two fifty right now. Honor me as your new king. Amy, I gotta ask you one last thing. Are you yeah. are you gonna remember all of us? From your hometown, I mean, because you're hitting it, you're you're on the you're on the cusp of the big time now, Emmy. I still haven't changed my cell phone number. Like I'm still check, keeping the 720, and always till the day that I die, I'm a Broncos fan, like die hard. So you know that's one thing that meant so much to me was to come back and you know do this thing tomorrow at the Westminster Promenade at like 7:30 at the theater and just and just do this. You know what I mean? Because this is my roots and this is where I grew up. And you know I have so many people that have supported me throughout my entire life and being able to watch it with them, you know, friends, family, coaches, doing all of that. It, it's it's such a dream come true. I love that he's still got his Colorado number, right? That's cool. Well, again, you can watch Marvel's Inhumans on IMAX screens here in the metro area for the next couple of weeks. Then the series starts here on Denver 7 on Friday, September 29th. And stick around. We'll be right back after this with your weather and sports. Well, we broke a record high today of 97 degrees. Tomorrow, not quite as hot. We'll be at 90, but check out that 70 on Tuesday for a high. We'll actually have nice. some upper 60s, low 70s. Then we're back up to 90 degrees by Friday. So a nice little roller coaster ride here. For a moment, yes. No. Well, Thank roller you. coaster riding into fall. All right. Well, a huge week coming up at Dove Valley. The Broncos getting ready for the regular season opener. And the return of Brock Star. Brock Osweiler is back as the backup quarterback. We'll hear from John Elway. Oh, we'll hear his inside. Plus, what is happening at Coors Field? The Rockies' bats have gone cold. Lionel Woody and Troy are next with Xfinity Sports. Welcome to Xfinity Sports Extra. Nothing going on in the sports world around here. Let's go back to Stacy for weather. Stacy! <laughs> I'm just kidding. Stacy, calm down over there. A lot going on here. Team Sloter goes to another team. Team Osweiler back with his former team. And the whole Rockies team, like going down a water slide at Waterworld into a pool of playoff misery. Oh, and the NASCAR regular season champion is right here in Denver. Other than that, there's nothing to see here. All right, we got a packed show tonight. Let's bring in the panel for tonight's show. That's the panel. These two. <laughs> Broncos insider Troy Rink is here and ESPN star and Denver sports legend Woody Page. And guys, do you remember this one time at Mile High when Brock Osweiler was the king of the world? November 29, 2015, 21 months ago, Brock was the toast of Broncos country. A Brock star was born. He had just beaten the Patriots at Mile High. Broncos fans saying, oh, it's his team now. The future's here. Then after the Super Bowl win, he jumped ship for Houston. Four-year contract, 72 mil, 37 mil guaranteed, and he never came back. For the trip to the White House or the Super Bowl ring ceremony at Mile High, but now he is back to retrieve his career after flaming out in Houston and Cleveland. Was there bad blood when he left? A messy divorce? Well, I guess not. He's back, right? John Elway said as much at Dove Valley. No, it's not true. So, you know, I think that, uh, you know, I, 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 you know, when Brock made the decision, he, th he made the best decision that he thought was best for him. And so, you know, it's just kind of funny how these things worked out and, and uh, with our situation and, and Brock being available that, uh, you know, it was it, it, you know, it's a bit funny how everything aligned. And so, you know, we know that Brock can win football games with us. He's played a lot. Of, he's got a lot of experience. And so, uh, you know, that was that was one glaring hole we had at that point in time, in my mind, when 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 Paxton hurt the shoulder. So. We're able to get it fixed. But Brock was obviously a great fit because he's been here. He's had, he's had success with these players in the locker room. And um, um, he won a playoff game last year, so it's a great fit for us. But is it a great fit for Woody Page? Woody, are you going to have to move? You took over Brock Osweiler's condo, right, when he left town. Well, Brock called me. He said, I'm known as the comeback kid. I'm coming back. <laughs> Get out of my place. <laughs> <laughs> Get it was, out. It was, it was funny from that standpoint, but I was shocked almost that both of them sort of made up and kissed and moved on and as if nothing ever happened. And I was a bit surprised, but when you consider the price that they got him at, that even if it doesn't work out, if they, if they, in a month from now, if they're not happy with the way that Brock is 
progressing here again. If he hasn't had rehab in football, as as Elway pointed out, then they can cut him, and it's not that big a loss, really, in terms of money. It's not $37 million that two other teams have paid him over the last 18 months. Right. So, Troy, they get a veteran backup who's won games here in Denver, who knows McCoy's system for under a million bucks right now. Well, it is an interesting thing because Brock's career has gone, you know, Bob studying straight downhill since he left. But here's the, the vitriol for him on social media is real. Fans see him as a traitor because he left the Broncos for the Texans and how that went down. But I say it, look at it this way if you're a Bronco fan. He did them a favor. Had he played for the Broncos last year, I think they go 9-7, and seven, and he's making $16 million to do it. Trevor Simeon took him, Woody, to 9-7 and seven at minimum. At worse than minimum, frankly, because he was a, such a late-round pick. They bring Brock in not to start, right. but to be the backup. But who would have thought that the biggest controversy of the decision was the Broncos choosing yeah. Brock Osweiler over Kyle Sloter? You can't make this stuff up. That's not <laughs> so. Woody, given Trevor Simeon's medical history and the prognosis on Paxton Lynch, how likely is it that we see Brock Osweiler as the starting quarterback for the Broncos this season? For October. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I would can stop. Well, I would just say this. This is the first time in the Broncos' history, I went back and looked, that they will have three guys on the roster that have actually started games for this team before. Yep. Think about that. In a 60-year history, that's never happened before. Is there a chance he'll start this year? I think it's a very good chance he'll start. People talked about the Broncos will go to Paxton Lynch after the bye week if Trevor didn't work out. Well, he's got an off-injured history. Paxton is not up to speed. Right. He's hurt. And... I think we'll see Brock play in, the, in games, not only Brock coming into games, but I think he'll start before the season's over. Well, here's the issue, though. It's not the Brock that left here. He needs his confidence rehabbed. I mean, he was terrible last year for Houston in every way, Lionel. So if he's going to play games and win with this team, they got to get him back because his confidence is shot, the guy I saw. All right, well, he tweeted out tonight he's very excited, blessed, and took a beating, like you said, on social <laughs> media from the trolls for sure. All right, Kyle Slaughter will be able to afford a very big Slaughter house, like a Slaughter mansion even. Team Slaughter's relocated from Dove Valley to Egan, Minnesota, signed to the Broncos practice squad today. The free agent rookie from Northern Colorado was cut by the Broncos yesterday. His career as a Bronco was short but sweet. The kids straight out of Greeley uh, lit it up in the preseason. Hashtag Team Slaughter was born. The Broncos did want to bring Kyle back on the practice squad today, but the Vikings gave him $20,000 a week Standard rate for the practice squad is 7,200 a week. Kyle tweeted today, thank you, Broncos country, but the financial opportunity was too good to pass up. Troy, Broncos country in an uproar. Fans on social media wanted Kyle Slaughter to be the backup, at least wanted him on the practice squad. Did the Broncos make a mistake letting him get away? I don't think so, even though I really like this Kyle Slaughter story and where it's going. He's got a chance to have an NFL career. But here's what happened, folks. When they announced Simeon as the starter ahead of Lynch, they essentially cut Slaughter that day. Vance Joseph said, we're going with two quarterbacks. So for them to pivot from that to all of a sudden, if Simeon rolls his ankle first game, that suddenly they're going to trust Slaughter, they just couldn't get there, Lionel. Right. And now 